Damn these Biloxi blues, it happens every night. Yeah. That could ever be a friend of mine Nope The summer heat never treats me kind It leaves trouble on my mind So I'm bidding farewell Putting in my notice And I'll see you at another time Sing. This highway Does not know my name And I don't care No, I don't care Just don't, not even at all Any Right to the hood. Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas to keep there. Hello. Budgets live, not so live from the low budget live barn grill here in beautiful southern middle Tennessee. And this is the podcast for Monday, March the 13th. And I hope all you low lifers are doing well out there this fine Monday. And if you're just tuning in for the first time and you wonder what a low lifer is, well, that's what the listeners of this show refer to themselves as. And it's a term of endearment around here. It is not an insult. So welcome one and all new and old low lifers. And we're going to be getting together at the Bassmaster Classic here. I mean, winding down about 11 days, we're going to be getting together in Knoxville, Tennessee at the Hill Bar and Grill. For some low budget live, 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 some music, some good time sharing drinks, hanging out there, probably about 7 p.m., I'm gonna say, 7, 8, something like that. Tailgate super party. I don't know. We'll come up with a better name between now and then. We appreciate the folks at the Hill, Knoxville, Tennessee, putting up with us that night. We're gonna have a large time, some special guests lined up. It's gonna be fun. It's going to be fun. Man, it's, uh, it's good to be in the barn. I've been traveling my freaking butt off this week. I've been uh, all over the world and back, I feel like. And I've been to the to the land of Mickey Mouse. Not like that, though. I, I, I had work. It was not a fun trip. I hate Orlando. Uh, unless I'm in that area trying to catch a giant bass. Don't really mind Universal Studios if i got the kids with me and whatnot. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm a big child. I like roller coasters and things, but I hate the Orlando airport. And I've taken my kids through there many times, but it's just like nobody knows how to do security because they don't fly that much. And I get it. I get it. I try to be patient as a dad, but you just got all these little kids, and they're all Mickey Mouse cracked out of their head. I don't want to take my shoes off. I don't want to put my iPad in the bin. And then some old daddy's smacking him in the back of the head, and the line's wrapped around 300 times longer than it is at actual Disney to ride some stupid Dumbo the Elephant ride or It's a Small World at the freaking airport security line. I got to go back down there like two more times in the next few weeks just for work, for TH Marine. Drives me crazy, man. And if, and if you were in the security line, I'm one of those people. If you're one of those people I'm talking about, I apologize. I apologize because I've been, like I said, I have been that person. I have been the person on the security line multiple times with his family. And and it's not their fault. It's not their fault. Uh, it's Bin Laden's fault, right? Thanks a lot, Bin Laden, because airport security sucks. And I think, you know, when you kind of sit back and you watch, it's different at every airport. Some people take your shoes off. Some people tell you, ah, oh, just come on through. You get the old boy, it's like 5 o'clock on Friday. He don't give a damn. Just come on through here, buddy. You ain't got to take that laptop out. Don't worry about it. The next one, they're like, get your laptop out. Why are your shoes not on your feet? You can't wear that kind of shirt in here. Just depends on where you go. So I get people getting nervous, you know. I just, uh, I hate Orlando <laughs> for that reason. I'm sure it's a nice town. <laughs> Otherwise, the airport sucks, though, man, getting in and out. And Nashville's almost as bad because it's just a bunch of dang bachelor and bachelorette parties and wearing cowboy hats are all hung over, just dragging ass through the, <laughs> through the line and <laughs> security up there, man. It's about as bad. And that's where I, that's where I, uh, 
fly in and out of more than anything. It's that Nashville old B and A up there. And and speaking of for the last week, as I record this, as I record this a couple days early from March the thirteenth, the triple threat. And I wish I had a uh, a sound effect for this, but she's been gone too. I've been traveling. She's been gone. She's still not home today as I record this. By the time you hear this, she will be home. She's been in damn London. London, England. I think that might have been Australian accent there. But she's been across the pond almost seven days as I record this. I'm not well. I'm not well. She doesn't travel without me very much at all especially across the damn ocean, but she got an opportunity to go over there with some students of hers and, uh, and, and, and she works for college, uh, teaching, uh, rad tech, radiology tech, really cool. She got to go work in a hospital in London for a few days. These students, she got to teach London, uh, British, what, however you want to say it, uh, radiology students, really cool, really cool week for her. Not cool for me being here, uh, you know, it was on the road, got the dogs, got the kids trying to take care of them as I'm in and out. And, uh, it's just, it's, I let, you know, chaos, it's chaos around here. Like me and the boys, it's been chaos. It's been complete and total chaos. So I'm glad, I'm glad that as you're listening to this, the triple threat is back in the United States. Something else I'm glad for these sponsors that make all this possible here, low budget live week in and week out the folks like StarTron. Kicking ethanol in the teeth, in your chainsaw, in your weed eater, most importantly, in your outboard engine. Nothing ruins a great day on the water like an outboard engine that won't run thanks to stupid, dumb ethanol. Ethanol is just terrible. And it's in 10% of all your fuel. I think that's the stat. A little dab will do you. Get some of this, especially if you're going to store the boat, which shame on you if you're like me and you're keeping it stored way too much these days. Drop some in there. Ethanol will gum up the work. StarTron kicks it in the teeth. We're going to have some uh, StarTron goodies to give away. StarBright, StarTron goodies to give away there at the Classic Party, as always, for live, 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 live. They, they have been a uh, a great partner of this show for many, many years, and uh, I'm grateful for those people, to say the least. Pro Guide Batteries. Pro Guide Batteries making fine lithium batteries agm batteries and they've been in the battery business for a very 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 long time i say it week in and week out you do have a lot of lithium companies out there you have a lot of fly-by-night battery companies i got this one does this man it'll run your whole house oh man look at this it's powerful it's got all the power there's so many lithium battery companies out there bro guy been in business longer than all of them they got into the lithium game they took their time their lithiums are right. They got a new lithium cranking battery coming out at the Classic. It's going to be freaking phenomenal. I got one sitting right here. Talked about it last week. It, it meets all the specs that Mercury requires for your warranty and all that jazz. It's going to be awesome. You can check it out at the Classic there. Or you can get on the website and get your own batteries. Use code LBL10 at ProGuideBatteries.com. BaitWorks.com. bait Dash works.com Springfield, Missouri. Got to stop in there a couple weeks ago. Talked about that. Spent way too much money. Those folks got it going on. They got the LOB jig front and center in the store. They got it on the website. They had it at Red Crest. So many of you reached out that you picked up some jigs at Red, Qu- Red Crest. Baitworks will not have a booth at the Bassmaster Classic, but I will have. I will have LOB jigs in the TH Marine booth. So if you want to check them out, you can do so there. But I got I got to you know give a huge shout out to the folks at Baitworks. It's the time of year where you're going to be getting your tackle ready. There's all kind of new and fancy and flashy. I saw they got the new Bass Mafia uh, Zal Dangerous swim baits in stock last week. So get on there, check them out. If that's something you want to look at. They they got the goods. The new Zoom Uni Toad. I got a couple uh, packs of those while I was up there. Can't wait to try that thing out here uh, as the weather continues to warm in Tennessee. But you can use code DUNCAN-10 at bait-works.com to let them know your low lifer and save some cash there. And last but not least, hang the banner. <laughs> that Bassmaster Classic winning all-welded high-performance aluminum bass, both the X21 Pro L. E built in Hot Springs, Arkansas, by some of the finest folks in the business. They hang those 250 Yamaha show on the back to give it the best hole shot in the game, in my opinion. Sea deck bowed astern, big old live wells, more tackle storage, 
than you could ever need and 96 inches up there on the beam. This is not your granddaddy's aluminum boat. Trust me on that. Take a ride in one and you will understand why an Express X21 is the official boat of low budget life and why people say they've been building excitement since 1966. We're going to have some excitement there in their booth at the Classic as well. 1 p.m. on Saturday, the 25th live podcast. It's going to be... If it's anything like it is every year, just just kind of crazy. <laughs> just kind of crazy. There's just going to be a lot of people in and out. Uh, it's normally a revolving door of guests, and sometimes I don't even know who's coming up next. <laughs> but we have a we have a good damn time in the Express booth every year the last, uh, last couple there at the Classic. So be sure to come out, make some rack at 1 p.m. there in the Express Boats booth. Can't wait. I'm sure we'll be propped up on an X-21. Come see it for yourself. All right. All right, moving on. Lots going on in the fishing world. And something that I, you know, I I really, uh, sponsor-wise, I had an idea, not necessarily for my show, but if any of you have seen some of the goings-on on Facebook and some of the drama from down there at the Southern Open, drama from the first Southern Open. Hank Weldon was on this very show and was like, oh, everybody's going to behave and nobody's going to break any rules and there's not going to be any craziness. And then... One of the craziest things that's ever happened in bass fishing history happened. <laughs> All on video. And, uh, you know, a sponsor for the show, uh, potentially, you know, you, you see billboards all over the place. I'm a big breaking bad guy. Always like better call Saul, the lawyer, if you're, if you're familiar with that. But want to be a bass pro? Better call Joe. Ding. Uh, crazy video. If you've seen it, I'm not going to share it here. Uh, but crazy, crazy video made its rounds on, on the Facebooks. And, uh, I saw, I got it sent to me, uh, a few times by, by some competitors in that tournament. And the situation is this, if you haven't seen it, there's a competitor, Tucker Smith, Tucker Smith, I'll say his name right here, uh, who has been disqualified, uh, at the time of this recording from day two, his day two weight disqualified from the event. Over some things that happened, he is appealing. I'm not sure how that DQ will go down. But uh, but this video very blatantly shows a man uh, who is, is, is a lawyer, uh, allegedly, uh, down in, in that Eufaula area, and he is harassing very clearly a contestant who is trying to fish next to Tucker, on a spot that he says he was on on day one, the man harassing is 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 just being completely a crazy pants, uh, which sounds like allegedly happens a good bit down there. You follow, there's a lot of confrontations that happen on that lake over spots and things uh, with all kind of people. But he claims to be a man named Ryan Ingram, and he is very much not Ryan Ingram. Uh, from from the grapevine, it sounds like him and Ryan Ingram might not even be buds. Uh, he also claims in said video that he does not know the little guy, Tucker Smith, who was staying at his house during the event. Uh, I guess people don't realize, myself included, like, you know, videos happen. But it, what's what's amazing about this to me is that you think in this day and time you can, A, act like a complete and total buffoon, and then, and then release a, uh, a video of your own Basically just saying, you'll sue the pants off of anybody. I am a lawyer. I will sue the pants off of anybody. And I can act how I want to act and completely uh, and completely fudge the entire thing. Lie in the video about who you are and, and that you don't know the competitor that's actually in the tournament that you should not even be meddling with, right? And then in your video to try to whatever, and I think that video has been taken down now, Say, well, I love him like family. He's like family to me. It's all bizarre. And and it smells like a skunk for a lot of different reasons. And I don't know Tucker. I, I've had some I've had some uh some back and forth with Tucker. I, I like Tucker. I like Tucker Smith. I think he's a good little fisherman. Uh obviously he's one of the million dollar winners there for the Bass Pro Shops tournament. I, I I like Tucker. He's always nice when I see him. And uh and I don't mean any ill will towards Tucker in this, but where there is smoke, there is fire, and when something smells like a turd, most likely you stepped in it somewhere. And this dude, if he acts like this a lot in life, and this is the kind of person you associate with, you might ought to change your direction. 
and your and your crew because this was bad for a lot of reasons. This is bad, and th- and this put a lot of pressure on Bass to do to do something because. It just stinks, man. Uh, it's one thing if you get help from a local to lake or you got a buddy that lives somewhere and you stay with them, but it's another for a guy to be out there in the competition, not watching you, not just watching you. I've had buddies come out and watch me at, at, when I fish, and, and it's cool, family members and whatever, but to meddle with what's going on, uh, man, just it's a bad look. It's a bad look. There's no way to spin what's on camera. It's like whatever I say here, I said it. You can it, it and and there are times like you could cut clips of this and say, "Oh, well, it was taken out of context." And that's very much a reality. When you act like a complete and total moron on the water and then try to justify, it, there's no spinning that. There's no spinning that. But having an outside force, and we play our game on public waters, but having an outside force who's already, I would dare say, helping Tucker, you know, they're buddies. He's going to tell, if I got a buddy on Pickwick, I'm going to be like, yeah, man, go fish here, go fish there. He's already assisting the young man, I'm sure, in where he should go, you know, prior to uh, it going off limits and all that stuff. I'm sure. They fish together a lot down there, it seems, via, you know, looking at social media. Um, but he's already kind of, you know, he's, he's kind of gave him a leg up in that situation. But to be out there and to try to intimidate another young man from fishing this area, it's a bad look. It's a bad look. Uh, I hear there's a lot more to the video that's not gone public that is really bad. And uh, I've heard that. I've not seen that. I've been told that by multiple people. And uh, it's just a shame. It's a damn shame, man. And and uh, I do think I do think that lawyers feel like they're above the law. And in my personal experience with a lot of lawyers, and I probably have some that listen to the show, uh, you know, especially small town guys, they're chumps. Like they they do. They feel like they can uh, they feel like they can do whatever and litigate their way out of it. And it's just you know proofs in the pudding, man. Like it just is what it is. Like sometimes you got to take a solid L and go, yeah, I'm a jackass and move along. But uh, just weird though. This thing could be like a a Netflix documentary by the time it's all said and done. I swear to God. Like it's been so crazy. Like you get in the comments of the Facebook post. Uh, I was flying when all this went down. And I was I was bored, so I was on Wi-Fi. And I'm in the comments. I just thought it was funny, and uh, so much of it's funny. And there are fake pages, <laughs> very clearly fake pages, defending this guy and commenting back and forth. And like, I was a witness, dude. It's bizarre. It's bizarre the links that have been gone to 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 stir this. And and what's sad to me, what's sad to me, and I I, I I've been in a lot of hot water for things I've said on this show, obviously. And, uh, and I'm always fortunate that I have people rush to my defense. And there's one overwhelming theme in this is nobody, this guy that acted like a total buffoon, there's not been anybody other than fake pages and his girlfriend, it would appear to defend him. Everybody, my inbox has been slammed with people from that gender area. Like, yeah, it was no surprise. <laughs> like it's it's crazy, man. So allegedly, allegedly, uh, you know, it's kind of a turd hit. And and look, before I get litigated, you can say somebody's an asshole. <laughs> and allegedly, you're an asshole, and you impacted, uh, affected the outcome of a bass tournament. Period. End of story. Like you did. You did. Whether uh, I know that the big talk was were you whole sitting, were you not, all that. I don't know about any of that. I know you're an asshole. That's what I know. And I know you think that you can get away with it by suing folks. And like, I, I just think it's a joke. Um, one of the saddest things that I've seen, two things that came out of this are very sad to me. First of all, this this jack wagon owns Aaron Martin's last boat, and he's doing these things in, in a boat wrap that's, that's Aaron's. And Aaron was one of the finest people on planet Earth that would never condone something like this, ever, ever, okay? I knew him well, would have never condoned this, ever, okay? 
The second thing is, and this is an angle that nobody's really talked about or thinking about in this, and, and it hit me uh, as I was flying home the other day. Somebody had sent me a link to some marina down there. They had said that this gentleman couldn't fish their tournaments anymore because of his actions, and then they said, ah, well, we'll let him back, I'm sure, because they got threatened, whatever. Uh, who knows? Um, small town politics kind of stuff and happens in every little town, but, uh, but there was a couple of just locals that aren't fishermen that commented on this and they were tagging the mayor of Eufaula, who's a bass fisherman, a great guy. They were tagging him in it. They were tagging the chamber of commerce and they're like, great look for our community. Great look for our lake. That's why these bass tournaments shouldn't come. Taken out of context, they're they're looking at it's a boat wrap, it's a guy running his mouth, cussing, going crazy on another person. It looks like it's two competitors fighting. This video's gone over a hundred thousand views. It's it's you know, it's viral in the fishing world. And outsiders are seeing it that don't know our sport. And and look, there are confrontations on the water all the time. This is uh this is crazy. Uh, like when it's captured like this. And there's a lot, man, dude, there are Karens on boat docks yelling at people. These videos come come out, but these situations, when they escalate like they have, and they get outside of our realm, because we all think it's funny. We think the guy's a jackass. Uh, hopefully justice will be served if there's any wrongdoing there at all uh, to, to violate a rule in the tournament. You know, as far as as far as the anglers uh, associating with this dude are concerned, and and hopefully Bass will do the right thing there. Uh, and it sounds like they have, and and there's an appeal process, and we'll see by the by you know a couple of days after this podcast airs, he may be scot free. I don't know, still in the top ten in the tournament. I don't know, but it's just uh, it's for outsiders. It makes us look really stupid. And we're already seen in a lot of light as just a, just kind of a not a serious sport to some people, or they don't understand it. And you get you know some of the comments you read, oh, they buzz around in their brightly colored bass boats are dangerous. They're this, and then when you see a guy threatening and 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 just you know I'm going to run circles around you all day, and I'm this and just acting crazy, and you see that, and that's the example that people in that community who host a lot of bass tournaments. It's that that lake is one of the most important fixtures in bass fishing historically, currently, whatever it's, it's Mecca. And there are people that have a bad taste because of one of their own that lived down there acted like an asshole. It's all caught on tape, all caught on tape. So yeah, I've had a lot of people like, what, what's your take on it? My take is that. Like my take is it, it makes us look bad. Uh, it puts Bassmaster in a terrible position. And, and here's my thing. Here's my thing. I don't know why. Cause his, his, his original story when he posted a video is he was out there just fishing and he did not even know where Tucker was at the man that he didn't know. It was bizarre. You're fishing when your buddy's trying to win a tournament to go to the Bassmaster class. This kid that you love like family in the same video is trying to go to the Bassmaster class and you're just fishing in the general area, but then you see a injustice done. So you go to get in it, even though this dude, other competitor, fished the spot the first day, which you should have known that because you're out there riding around too, allegedly. I don't know. It just stinks. It stinks. And it's like JT Kenny said on this show in January, we cover up the crap in bass fishing that we should be covering. And this is one I ain't going to pass up talking about. I, I, I just, I don't get it. I don't, I don't care if a guy's an attorney. I don't care if he's got money. I don't care if he's a big deal in a small town. You're an asshole. And now, now, regardless of, of, how the DQ shakes out and all that. Tucker Smith, who is a good fisherman, obviously, there'll always be this around it. Like you took away from, think about that, dude. You took away from, whether you whether there was a rule infraction, whatever, you took away from the one that you say is like your family member. Like, and then had, and then, and then, you know, 
fake pages defend it and no nothing else. Like it's it's weird, man. It's it's a it's a super super crazy deal, and uh, you know that's my two cents on it. Want to be a pro? Better call Joe. I forget what Better Call Saul's tagline line was. Um, they'll probably be billboards, you know. Want to fish that brush pile? Better call Joe. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Alexander, shout na, 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 na. Just billboards all over the place. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Interesting. All right, moving on from that garbage. Uh, and it is, you know, it's it's sad. It's man, I've seen some really funny memes. Seen a lot of things. The the other sad part of this, before I end on this, is that Ryan Ingram, Ryan Ingram, who is one of, if not the other than like Tom Mann and a couple of other guys from Ufala, Ryan Ingram's a legend on Ufala. He just is. And uh, I, I've been around Ryan a lot over the years. Fished a lot of tournaments against Ryan. And the fact that this dude acted like it was him and then tried to act like it was a tip of the hat to him and all this crap, it's just, uh, it's silly, man. It's silly. And Ryan, and Ryan got crucified in the comments because when the guy says, not Ryan Ingram, not on the lake. I'm a big boy. I'm a big boy. <laughs> it's just so stupid. I don't care if your mama made this spot. <laughs> Your mom shouldn't have let you out of the basement, dog. Calm down. <laughs> I got by a boat. <laughs> silly, man. So silly. <laughs> uh, it's been a fun week, though. It's been hilarious reading comments and uh, getting memes and whatnot sent to you. It's been a. It's been a. Uh, it's been a fun week. It's been a fun week, but. Hopefully justice will prevail. That's what most lawyers want, right? Justice. So hopefully justice will prevail, and uh, and we'll see how it all shakes out, man. We will. There's a lot more to it, though. I will say, I do know things. There's a lot more to it. There's a lot more to it. And I think that uh, could, <laughs> there's a lot more details that are really funny, actually. But uh, we'll we'll get into those at a later date, hopefully, if things continue to escalate. All right. So. Uh, Red Crest is going on as I record this. I think it's day three or four of it. And uh, some hammers, some hammers trying to fish for 300K in uh, Lake Norman. It's always so close there. Golly. And I've seen people in the comments, I always have to read comments when I'm bored, especially like a week like this when I'm flying around. And people just like, oh, those little fish don't like it, and it's only taking this kind of weight, and it's the best. Pro. It's just the playing field. But, man, it's been uh, the the first couple of days that I got to watch, a lot of fun to keep up with. And and I'd say uh, by the time you're listening to this, it was probably dramatic <laughs> going into the end because it was so tight um, in the standings. And I like the format. I feel like it's really long, but I like the – the. I mean, it's a, it's a freaking grinder. It's five days – and they go uh, first two days, cumulative weight, top 20. Then they you win on a three-day cumulative total like the old Forcewood Cup or the Bassmaster Classic. You got to catch them, dude, <laughs> for five days. It's a freaking gauntlet. And uh, I think I think it's a, it's a pretty cool format. I'm not going to lie. Uh, hopefully the expo went well. And hopefully y'all, y'all uh, you know, you got over there and, and – and, got your hands on all them lobs i had some of you message me about it but i hope that uh hope that you you, you know you paid for them hope you didn't just walk off with them all right we got mpfl coming up this week something that i gotta i gotta drop in here that i want to drop in here a new weigh-in show and i made a post about it but a new weigh-in show with myself and fat cat it's going to be available our our production companies fix productions fix tv and they have a new app called the fix tv app and this this will be available on there, but it basically be Fat Cat and I, kind of like the Peyton Manny Eli uh, Monday Night Watch Party, Monday Night Football Watch Party. That's the concept behind this. But Fat Cat and I will be watching the way in and kind of goofing off, having fun, trying not to get fired, trying not to make too many uh, jokes about your mom making a spot and things like that. But uh, it'll be a good time, man. It'll be a good time. Of course, live coverage returns. We're gonna do live on days two and three. Got a, got a small field this year, 80 boats, 78 boats, something like that. A lot of fish catchers in this field. 
it's going to be a good damn time. And they kick off down at Pickwick Lake. The tournament dates are the 15th through the 17th. Wednesday to Friday to kind of get off that Bassmaster Classic practice. But if you guys are in the area, Florence, Alabama, be sure to go check them boys out. I will be in the studio in Wisconsin up there in the damn snow and ice when a tournament's 40 minutes from my house. Yes, it makes no sense to y'all, but for production value, we like to be in the studio. So me and Fat Cat will be up there. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a large time, a large time. All right, let's get the sauce from somebody presented by the W Sauce. This guy, speaking of MPFL, this man has won over $2 million everywhere. You can't just say with one tournament trail because this dude fishes all of them. Every damn one of them. Now has added NPFL to his already insane schedule so he can run around with his little buddy Keith Carson and other elite series cohort, Patrick Walters. Lots of, lots of big timers going to play in the MPFL this year to go with them big timers that are already in the MPFL that'll freaking cross their eyes at every tournament. But this man is someone that uh, I feel like everybody in the sport loves. Nobody has a damn bad thing to say about this guy ever. And if you do, get out of my life because he's one of my favorite people ever. Ladies and gentlemen, one of two Cox, Coxes, I don't know how to say that, that we will have on the MPFL this year, Florida's very own John Cox. Uh, All right, as promised, here he is, the man from D. Berry, Florida himself, the, the daggum one of two. Did you ever think that you could say that in a professional bass fishing event that you will be one of two cox coxes out there, <laughs> just <laughs> cox fighting around? I know. It's crazy. <laughs> John Cox, everybody, what's up, buddy? <laughs> hey, man, what's happening? Listen, I, I uh, <laughs> whatever I said that whenever your name, whenever you and I were texting, I'm like, dude, are you gonna fit? Are you gonna fish with us? Yeah, we're going back and forth and. And uh, when I did a show after the roster came out, I said, I can assure you one thing. I don't know what's going to happen with the MPFL this year, but we will have the most cocks. <laughs> All the cocks in the MPFL this year. And, 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 and it is going to be hard on my part. I just I, – I pray you guys both don't end up on camera. <laughs> yeah. What? It's going to be – it'll be hilarious. I'll have yeah. – I'll get fired for all the cocks yeah. I'm going to make all day long. But uh, – that's going to be tricky. We're going to, I, I know, I Florida, was to think Florida, of, John. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of, like something else to go by or like, you know, is this, you know, I, I don't know. There's just well, so he many. Is, he is taller than you. So I may have to call you little John. Like there may <laughs> be. So the first year Dudley and I called him the other John Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh All year. And he loved it. I was like, John, I'm going to call you the other John Cox. And then I was calling him the original John Cox because he's yeah. older than you. I was like, yeah. well, he's here before him. Oh, so I yeah. the OG, the original yeah. John Cox and fishing. <laughs> yeah. yeah so cool. We're going we're gonna to have fun, dude. So why? Why on earth do you think you need to fish another tournament trail? I'm glad you're there. I can't wait. But, dude, you added one more thing. You're, you're not fishing BPT because of conflicts, but you're fishing the Invitationals, and now you're going to jump in with, with Keith over here in the MPFL. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's honestly pretty much Keith's fault. You know, I mean, I, I, uh, you know, I didn't really look at much, uh, much of it, you know, or even where we're going. And Keith was like, Hey man, there's, uh, you know, you can make five, of, five of the six and he, you know, and he was like, it'd be cool. We could travel together. And I was like, okay. So. And a small, a small field this year, mm -hmm. which I feel like helps you guys, not that you need help, but I know, the way you guys like to fish that shallow water deal, that really helps, right? Like it opens up that much more water. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's going to be great. The smaller field, you know, you can pretty much uh, a lot of the stuff that was like, Oh, that's an obvious spot. You, know, you actually get to fish some of that stuff now and, uh, you know, get beat up in practice and stuff as much. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think it's going to be cool. Like, I, I mean, you know, with the field so small, I mean, I mean, gosh, even dumping in in the morning, weighing, everything's going to just go so much smoother. And uh yeah, it's gonna be exciting. So you, yeah, I think we all we do have one conflict with the elite. So you can fish five mm -hmm. of the six. Mm -hmm. 
So you're going to have to work your butt off to make the championship because that's a lot of money on the line with that deal. It's going to be cool too. But let's talk about the chance, hundred grand, seventy something dudes. Like that's yeah. got to be factoring in there too for you, right? Like, well, like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it's like fishing a championship, you know, and uh, and it's really neat. And and I don't know, you know, you know, if I get lucky and maybe win one, would be great. You know, uh, the main goal is uh, to just try to uh, break even on those, you know, because we're really packing them in there, you know, and uh, so. Uh, that's always your goal though right not to yeah it really that's is always it's your just, goal i feel like pretty much yeah and uh but man i mean it, i mean how exciting you know you know 70 someone out of 70 i think six guys 75 yeah, guys whatever yeah, it is yeah 76 77 i should know that yeah. i work for them i don't I somewhere don't in there but w- one of those guys i mean 100 grand really changes your life i mean i know first time i won 100 grand i got to move out of my mom's house my dad's house I bought a house down the road, you know. Now houses are a little more, but uh, you know, still, do, do it's, do I, it's a good down payment. Yeah, it's a really good down payment, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I mean, it's super cool. It's gonna change someone's life every one of those tournaments. Well, looking at Pickwick, I know it's not your favorite place in the world. <laughs> Oh, no, bad times. Now, yeah. I think it was the it was FLW last year. You called them. You called them. I was like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. The Elite Series a couple years ago in the same time frame. Maybe you want to forget that one. You it was, yeah. not, oh, it was terrible. What is yeah. it about the Tennessee River? Because you do chick right up the road, one of your right. favorite places. But what is it about this Tennessee River Lake in Pickwick that you don't? maybe like connect with what what's what's because pickwick's different i feel like than a lot of the other lakes on the chain oh it really is i what i learned or seem to realize about pickwick is that uh for me when the current gets running it trumps everything everything that's happening anywhere else in the land and uh and i refuse to believe that (laughs) <laughs> you know, and uh, that's why I finished dead last. When the current's running, I finished dead last. But I'm going up this year. <laughs> I'm only bringing my crank and stuff, my spinner baits, uh, you know, a couple of new slobber knockers, and uh, I'm going to fish in the current. <laughs> you refuse. You refuse to be uh, beaten by the current again. See, that's – so for a Tennessee River guy – that's the Florida thing, right? When I go down there, it's very much like the first time I ever went to Okeechobee. Oh, you're not supposed to be able to catch them in dirty water. Watch this. Yeah. We catch them in dirty water in Tennessee suckers. And then yeah. zero. And you're yeah. like, Oh yeah. yeah. So I get it. Like you come same in with same 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 notions. You're like, Oh, well shallow fish or shallow fish. And then yeah. they turn the current on and it's like, Oh, these fish are really stupid. They do yeah. weird things. And they, right. Do, man they do they do yeah. weird weird things on the tennessee river mm-hmm. for like, sure it can be like tidal water too pick quick for me like being a shallow water angler who loves to fish like you do i'm also you know i'm i fish the dams i've, I've done all that my whole life but i love like pickwick's got a lot of beautiful cover like right. some of the prettiest stuff you'll see in the country right but, and they, they jack with the water so yeah. much that you could catch them somewhere for five minutes and then never get another bite there the rest of the week. Like it's yeah. for how it works. It really right. is. It definitely Pickwick definitely fluctuates, uh, especially that Florence end of the lake yeah. uh, more than anywhere I've ever seen. You know, like you say, you might flip to that bush and catch one in the morning. And then by the afternoon there's it's three foot up on land, you know, yep. oh, no <laughs> doubt. Yeah. It's like, it's yeah. very much like tidal water. The guys that understand it, they're dangerous, man. They really, uh, how, how the current affects them, how the, the lake levels and, and you're right, right there at the tail race, when they flip the switch, it can raise or lower, like things, things get wild. I've seen some, uh, I've seen some crazy things happen. Guys getting stuck up in shallow, you know, shallow little hidey holes. Like, Oh, I'm going to be good. And they're like, yeah, oh, you're there. You're there yep. forever. You're stuck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can ask Keith about that. I think he ruined ruined one of the boats there. Oh, at, uh, one of those spots. <laughs> <laughs> one of the boats. Yeah, one of them there. <laughs> so let's talk about that dynamic. I had both of you guys on when you when he came over to fish the pro circuit, the invitationals, whatever they're called now. I can't keep up. I think it's the invitation. Yeah. Not gonna worry how uh, invitation. Yeah, yeah. Invitationals. Yeah, and and I was like, how is it working out, guys? 
both of you and you said on this show you said it's not it's yeah not. because you know, I mean, it, it, has it gotten any better being able to kind of work together and go hey this is how this is going to shake out or what's the deal well so i think you know last year it was like he would top 10 or i would top 10 and yeah, we could yeah. never both catch him like it was just like you know i was trying to stay out of his way or he tried to stay out of my way we do terrible uh this last tournament uh, went really well. I, I got up there uh, kind of late because it's coming from Seminole. He already practiced like an area and, and got kind of dialed in. And uh, he like sent it to me. He's like, look, this is where I'm fishing. And I'm like, wow, that's like six miles. How about you give me a little bit of that? And he's like, uh, and he's like, well, I'm going to run all of it. And I was like, okay. And I was like, I was like, what about these two pockets here? And he's like, I didn't go on them. And I was like, okay, I'll go on them. So that's what I ended up fishing. And we both did good, you know? I, I didn't that's see the entire it? tournament. Yeah. Yeah, we both did good. Oh no, I, I just we both just missed the top ten. Okay, but it, but we had cameras and stuff. Like we did really good in the tournament, and uh, I was kind of disappointed because I wanted to see him. Like I wanted to see him that midday. Be like, hey man, you got any? And we never ran into each other, <laughs> but we were in the same area. It was crazy, but it was a lot. It was a lot of fun. We had, I actually really enjoyed that tournament. Uh, I hope we go back to Clark. So that place, I don't think people realize how many fish are in that lake. Well, you know, I had that on my on my notes here to talk to you about because I fished Hartwell a bunch, just like you have and everybody has. But but Clark's Hill back in the day, I can remember talking to like guys like Gagliardi, Thrift about it. Like it used to be the lake, like it was yeah. the one over there. And then they had some Bassmaster. I think Davy Hype maybe won a Bassmaster yeah. there yeah. on Dave. a pop gig, yeah. yeah, years ago on a heron spawn deal. But but yeah. man, you guys railed them over there like it oh, was man. fun to watch yeah it what i was shocked was how uh i mean for me i didn't get to practice much but I, like I, I didn't really find a lot of dead water you know it was like you could go into an arm uh and get a bite you know and that's that's super cool you know that that it, it seemed like i had so many fish in, and so so huge like i i saw uh one guy the the whole time yeah and i mean there's a hundred and uh 50 60 of us and like it was incredible how big that place is i mean you got dirty water in the back of every every creek in there you know i mean it it was a really cool place yeah it, it was uh and to have the spotted bass and and big mm -hmm. largemouth held dakota e-bear weighed some weight yeah. hammers obviously yeah, Child. yeah. <laughs> win that yeah. thing uh by the way we and as we're recording this red crest is going on while everybody's listening red crest is is finished when everybody listens to this on monday that dude's on a little bit of a roll right now. They better watch him over there for that 300K. I oh, feel like yeah. Maybe he's already won it when people are listening. Yeah, yeah I don't but, know. But he made a big jump uh, the, the right before recording this. He made a big jump to get into that those knockout rounds and all that. That, yeah. that dude is – he the second he came on in the, the tour, I think he fished the last year I did. It was his first year. Right. He immediately starts getting checks. He's – consistent and that dude is just kind of getting into a little bit of a, a rhythm i think it's gonna be scary for a lot of folks oh yeah yeah no he definitely i think it's kind of cool when you see uh you know um when you see an angler like kind of learn their self and be like hey yeah. this is what this is what i'm doing you know and that that's what he's doing i mean he's just catching them yeah you know, that's really cool yeah and and at, at clark's hill he was offshore with the live scope deal but he was also on the bank like he called mm -hmm. me on the bank he was he was mixing it up because most of the time i feel like i do see him offshore like he's an electronics guy he, right. he does really seem to enjoy that but uh right. what you do too big four facing sonar guy yeah yeah, yeah. Catching those blue you you catch one on camera is one of the coolest clips of the year big one comes up and eats a bluegill right yeah. in front of you yeah you just flip out there <laughs> hey i was like no one would believe this you know I could tell that story at, at the way in, and they'd be like, "Yeah, right." No cameraman over your shoulder. Nobody's believing John on that one. No, no. It you said that's what those guys out there in the middle are fishing for. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, I already knew that." I'm like, "Oh, I need to just try to get as close as I can to get paid and go to the next." Because <laughs> you figured they were going to slam them. Oh yeah, that's what yeah. I just figured. I was like, "If that's what lives out there, that you know, six, seven, ten feet of water, whatever it is, it was." Yeah, you know, you're screwed. I was in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> That's the biggest one I caught all week. It was in the deepest water, too. No, no kidding. That was yeah, the biggest yeah. fish of the week. Yeah, biggest one I caught all week. <laughs> Interesting, man. So will you do you have any intentions whatsoever of trying to go back and fish everything? Just BPT, MPFL, Elite Series invitations. Do you ever see, especially with the five fish thing now, which I know yeah. you 
you've had success in the other format, but yeah, now I, everything's kind of the same. Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoyed uh, the change, uh, you know, going over and fishing some of those and catching yeah. as many as I can. Um, but I mean, I, I would love to do them all again. It just really depends on how the schedules play out and, um, you know, and that's kind of what I've been doing. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's been tough. I mean, I've been watching Red Crest, uh, you know, this week and uh man it's it's kind of miserable <laughs> i mean i love being home but it's miserable knowing there's such a big tournament going on and not being a part of it and, and uh kind of in your wheelhouse this week too a little bit. <laughs> yeah, i love like norman i love oh, that's great yeah so yeah brian thrift beat me there one time for a hundred and something grand and and yeah. uh yeah yeah and an flw there in the fall I, uh, he beats a lot of people there for a lot yeah. of money uh, yeah, yeah. but but that lake is and i've seen comments on the oh man small fish it's it, that take that aside like dude it's such a cool playing field mm. with so many bites it's like you said about right. the there's not a lot of dead water on that lake i don't right. feel like now they do seem to congregate by size and areas and things but right. so cool you can catch spots power fishing you can you can uh try to find a unicorn largemouth every now and then. I think we right. saw Edwin Avers call like a six the first day. Like it's got big ones in it. Right. But yeah. such a cool body of water, dude. I've had a lot of fun over there the times I've gone. So yeah, I figure you have been foaming at the mouth watching. Yeah, watching I, I was. Yeah, I was just saying, yeah. because like you said, like I remember one of the days I had a practice over there, uh, you know, where I saw my general around. I, I bet I bet I shook a hundred off. Oh yeah. You know, and I mean, probably the most bites I've ever had on it in one day. And uh, I just, I mean, just gosh, it is, it has been tough watching it. <laughs> Not I, guarantee, I guarantee it. Have you, uh, have you been surprised whenever the announcement came out? Were you surprised? I should say that the format changed. Did you, did you think they would stick to their guns on that after fishing and being over there? Were you shocked to see they were going to go to five? Um, and I, I didn't know if they would go to all of it like that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, so far it seems like it's been pretty good. I mean, the, with the one with Chris Lane one and stuff, I mean, that was like, I mean, that was insane. You know, it still has buzzer it. Right buzzer beater. Yeah. Like, yeah. Crazy. I mean, yeah. So that, I mean, it worked out really well on that one. Uh, you know, but yeah, I, I think the guys are happy with it and, you know, they're enjoying it. And, um, you know, now they get to go fish for, you know, just, you know, five big ones. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. looks like a lot of fun. Same, same, same game we've always played. I think what, yeah. Interesting for me though is the score tracker element of it, right? Like that, right? That they know, oh gosh, my 11 pounds is getting my ass kicked, and right. they get to watch the guys make decisions based off of that. I, I, because it's more relatable for, for old school tournament fishermen that grew up in the five fish format, which is basically everybody, right? Oh my gosh, how would those demons get to you if somebody says, oh, yeah. Hey, John Cox has got 17 pounds, and you're fishing a row of docks right by me. And maybe I already fished them and didn't have a bite. And you're like, yeah. oh, my, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. I didn't, even think, I didn't even think of that part. That part yeah. would be, uh, Can you, know, you or you know, an area a guy's in, you know, that you want to fish, but you're kind of waiting for him to move out, and he's just lighting them up, you know? D yeah, yeah. It, it does change the game in that aspect because nothing gets to me more than if I do run into you and you're like, yeah, I got I got 19 already, and it's like 930, and I'm like, what the yeah. hell am I doing with my life? And I got two. <laughs> Which is, you know, obviously that was the case more times than not fishing against you. All the times I fished against no. you, I, I ever beat you one time. But, no. but that's that. I can't imagine some guy in the back of the boat. Uh, yeah, Luke, John just caught another one for seven pounds three ounces, and you're like, I gotta find my generals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Where are my general, I don't have yeah. them. Oh my god, <laughs> it wouldn't matter. I can't use them like John anyway. Dude, dude it, it's it's cool to me to see that bait become just so synonymous with you. Like, it's just like, they should put your face on all the packaging because it is <laughs> like, it is, it's just the John. Like once you, yeah. once you walk in with a bait like that, it's just yours forever. Like nobody <laughs> else can lay claim to the general and they are, I've talked to you off camera cause you're sponsored. All, 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 yeah. all anglers are sponsored and all fishermen are liars. That's always the joke. Right. But yeah. I've asked you like, when you first started like, yeah, catch me on a general. I was like, John, um, uh, you really catch them on a general yeah. really something I need. And you're like, dude, yeah. So <laughs> now I've got a bag full of them and it is, yeah. it's the deal. Yeah. They, uh, they really did really well with them. Just with everything, you know, just how it sinks faster and, you know, just, it's like a different plastic, you know, it's not your traditional plastic. Right. Oh, and I think that makes a huge difference. And 
um, you know, and then the more natural neutral colors. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, I have so much, you, you know what it is, is I take my kids fishing and that's what they throw, you know, and I would get whooped by them quite a bit. That's <laughs> wild. Yeah. So I'm like, ah, okay. I'm all in. <laughs> and, and there is something to that. You're right. The, the colors are natural. There's not a lot of wild colors. They're kind of mm -hmm. dull is the way I would put it too. You know, like, Almost like a flat kind of flat finish. Yeah, kind of. yeah. And, and they do, man, they get bit. Are, are you ever, and I, obviously I say this a lot on the show. I don't go in nuts and bolts of fishing. There's a million shows out there that do on the actual technique side, but do you nail weight? Much? I mean, are you just, are you just kind of straight up? you got a hook you like to make it sink the, at the rate you like. Yeah, so I, I don't uh, do much of the nail stuff anymore. Uh, I might Nico rig it if I need to get it down in like some deeper, you know, like some three and a half, <laughs> you know, maybe a little, but, but for the most part, the way the, the way the general, uh, how they built it so that it sinks faster and everything, uh, you don't really need the weight, you know, you can just wacky rig it, Texas rig it. Uh, I do a lot of, I, I do a lot, like I Texas rig it with no weight. That's like one of my favorite things and almost, oh, work, yeah. uh, you know, working like a jerk shad or like a, you know, a soft jerk bait style. Yeah. Um, that's like, honestly, that's like kind of one of my favorites that, you know, if I'm not throwing it wacky, I'm throwing it that way. And every once in a while I'll put a little bullet weight on it, but for the most part, that's just, I just keep it super simple. When, when the Cinco first came out, that was my, before the wacky craze started years ago, mm. 15 years ago or whatever, Texas rigging it, just throwing just straight up. Like that was always my favorite of like, like especially like Wheeler Lake was always fun. Yeah. With that. Wilson, like around seawalls and docks yeah. up there spawning where you couldn't see them. Yeah. We didn't know to wacky, like I, that, that was just what we did. Like just, I put it on a three or four out hook and throw yeah. it on a 20 pound fluoro and wait for the yeah. damn thing to swim <laughs> off and jerk. And real a lot in one day yeah. <laughs> in a month. Yeah. and so yeah. yeah that's a that's a killer way to fish it i think gets overshadowed a little bit now because of every the obsession with the wacky or nico stuff. oh yeah yeah well just with all the the broad red all the stuff we have now it's it's hard i mean i even find myself like you know like ah, do i really want to i want to throw this but you know when it comes down to it it's like i just want to catch them <laughs> you know <laughs> And I will say that about Berkeley. Damn, man. Th there's no shortage of new things for you to experiment. Oh, yeah. Ever. Well, you wait, wait, till the, wait till this eye cast. <laughs> it's going to, we got some stuff. Called, I've been, I've been testing some of the swim bait stuff that's coming. Edwin Evers caught I one. Saw, oh, yeah, I saw one. And Edwin I was like, caught. I thought we weren't supposed to talk about that yet, but, <laughs> but well, I, gotta, I mean, some awesome stuff coming. You shared that on Instagram and I saw it and I was like, wait a second. You said zoom in. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, man. So I zoom in. I'm like, oh, all right. I hear yeah. you. I hear yeah. You. The, col the colors that uh, they were able to get, it just it would blow your mind when you see them. It's uh, really, yeah. I, I haven't got to test any of the colors. I got the plain white one that, you know, the, the test ones and they were eating that up. Yeah. You know, I was like, I can't imagine when you get some color on it that's uh it's it's definitely going to be interesting to see how it compares to the because it looks similar it looks similar <laughs> to some other that style that's yeah that's popular i won't i won't go into detail yeah i mean i know they made a post with it but they didn't really they yeah. didn't really, like you did zoom in yeah yeah, yeah. just like oh we, we might as well show this since edwin's cracking them on it yeah, uh, yeah. that bite is one of my favorite bites now that i've discovered in the last three or four years i like that i like yeah. it when I, I, it's fun yeah i didn't really know much about it until i started you know and they're like you can skip it and i'm like really you know like they're like it skips like the general and i'm like nah there's no way and man you can send that sucker up under the docks i mean it it's impressive how you can skip something that big on a bait caster under yeah. some of that stuff. But yeah. It is a lot of fun. Will they have a lot of different sizes in it or would it just be kind of one standard size? Or no, what? there'll be a couple sizes. Yeah. I'm but it, it, uh, yeah, once, yeah, once you get it and see, and you're like, and you see how it's designed, you're like, Oh, that's why it swims so well. Like it's, it's cool. Like it's, uh, okay. they did a really, they did a really good job. <laughs> do, you, do you have any signature stuff coming? And I cast, uh, I got my rods and, and, uh, you got a spinning rod and a cranking rod, but I think that might've been last I cast, but that's all I got. I don't uh, know. Just some signature rods and reels. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. big deal. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that you have a signature cranking rod still just blows. It's crazy. Mind. <laughs> it's crazy. And I, I, and I, I promise I will be cranking probably the entire Pickwick tournament. I know, you, know? you will be. You're a I mean, I, I don't, I, 
I, I just, it, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, there is a lot of other things you can throw, but gosh, you pick up those fish that swipe at it a lot of times, you know, that wouldn't, you know, might not take a spinner bait, might not take your, you know, your slobber knocker or whatever. So it's just, uh, I really like throwing it. Well, now that you're this cranking fiend, you're like David <laughs> Prince Jr. Do you, I, I'll put you on the spot because I feel like a lot of people at home, you're, you're Mr. Pure Fishing, you are, and I know you're a Fritz side, God almighty, you catch them on it. So does Keith. I watch this all the time on MPFL with him. Do you, have you picked up any other crankbaits from other brands though? And in, in, in the boat, like, are you that deep into the cranking deal? Or are you just like Berkeley or die Fritz? Cause the Fritz sounds great, dude. It's one of the best plugs yeah. that's ever been designed period. Ever. Like it's killer. It's right. so, but do you you're like, Oh, I'll give me some of them little DT sixes or something. Yeah. Do you so, have other baits? So, uh, so I tried a lot of them other ones in the past, you know, and I used some, I caught some fish on them. Um, but it, it was something, uh, the Fritz side, like the first time I threw it, we, me and Brad and Keith, we caught like 20 something pounds. So I'm like, okay. And then I went one, uh, Rayburn with it. Yeah. And a couple yeah. months later, Keith won, uh, wherever the heck he won. I don't like, know. He won. Like, somewhere. Like. Yeah. So yeah. like it, for, to me, I have, I have a Fritz side box. <laughs> And that's what I bring. <laughs> now, now that but, little uh, that little deep one's sneaky. Yeah, little, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just mostly throw the five, but in all okay. the different, you know, the the junior, the regular, the big end. Um, but I have to say, uh, crankbait wise, well, the money badger, I'm pretty sure that's out. Yeah, uh, it's that out. Was, yeah, and that I think that was more of like for trolling walleye. And uh, they turned it into a bass lure. And, man, it, it's crazy how uh, weedless, like, as fast as you can crank, and it doesn't get hung up, like, grinding it into rocks and stuff. Um, so I've thrown that a lot. I've caught a lot of, uh, you know, other species on it and some bass, you know. But, uh, you know, it seems like everything eats it. But that that's a cool one. I'm probably going to throw that some more. And then uh, I think ICAST, we got a couple that, you know, might replace DT6 and some other stuff. Similar. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. You're going to get in trouble, but I'm getting oh, 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 edit that out. Bleep that part I'm out. I'm not going to have here. Yeah. Hang on a second. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Hey, Berkeley's got some other <laughs> coming out. I cast 2023. John Cox. The, <laughs> the Cox. Cox Frank. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> the, DC, the DC. The DC six. <laughs> yeah. Damn, Cox. <laughs> yeah. like my god okay. so gotta ask you this you've got you've got a history you got a lot of histories about a lot of things <laughs> but you have a history of being you, you know you're with crestliner you just plowing through the damn jungle to get to these spots and i heard a story and you you told a little bit of it there at Seminole, but you may have, have, have up. Uh, <laughs> was that the biggest of all time that you've done? Because because I've seen oh. you. I've seen you. I watched you one time at Chickamauga for all the folks at home here, the low lifers. You pulled up. I was a co angler at the time, and we were pulling into the Dayton boat dock, and your boat was actually on fire. Your yeah. console was smoking. You're like, hey, dude, you see this smoke? And I'm like, oh, like you gotta get your boat out of the water. You're on fire. I think we've told that on the podcast before, but yeah. so I'm not, I'm accustomed to, yeah, John's got, yeah, he doesn't have a transducer. He's going to do what he's got to do to get to the fish. You ever knocked a hole in one like that? Uh, I have, uh, I hit one at Ray Roberts one time. That was pretty bad. Uh, but nothing like at Seminole, uh, Seminole, you know, uh, just to set it up. I, I left my house, uh, at two in the morning, drove through the morning, got to the ramp, knew this all the weather. I'm like, man, this is like, you know, this is going to be an epic week. I can't wait to drop the trolling motor and start fishing. And I'm running the channel in. And I don't know if I made a boo-boo and went on the wrong side of one of the channel markers or, or, or what? Like, I don't know. It's, uh, it's 10 minutes into the morning. I haven't even put the trolling motor in. First yet. day of practice. First day of practice. And I jumped this, this stump in spring, spring Creek that, you know, I hit it going about 40 and the whole boat jumps out of the water, comes down. And I'm thinking like, okay, it's okay. You know, 
like, you know, it was kind of scary, but it wasn't bad. It was just like, I hit it on plane, didn't hit the motor. Uh, well, the bilge came on. So and then I was like, I was like, ah, you know, I'll fix it. You know what I get in. And I was like, and then something told me you should probably open up the back hatch and see how much water is in there. And I opened the back hatch and all my battle worn batteries, chargers, uh, power pull, everything is completely underwater. So I jumped back in the driver's seat and I just floor it as hard as I could to the shore, which was about a hundred yards away. And the water was shooting out the back hatch going by the motor. And I just drove it straight up on the bank, uh, you know, to keep it from, from going down. And, I, and I'm sitting in water, uh, you know, and I catch a ride from Larry Nixon. Oh, I tried to Uber first, but there's, there's no Uber going to pick you up in spring Creek out there in the middle of nowhere. I got a big deal. Yeah. So I, I, I go through my phone. I'm like texting everybody and I'm calling. No one's answering. And I'm like, hey, no big deal. Just, you know, I'm sinking. But, you know, give me a call back. I need you to pick me up from shore. And, and no one. But I, I finally got a hold of Larry Nixon. He came and got me and I got the truck and I pulled. And luckily there was a ramp right there where I drove it on the shore. And I backed it in and I go to the boat and I'm just like, God, please let this thing start. Like everything's underwater. I'm like, just let this yeah. start. And uh, it cranked right up. What? And, I, and I'm sitting in water and I back it off the shore and I drive it on the trailer. And then like I pulled the trailer out like an inch, let it drain, pull it out another, you know, just like what it popped the tires. And uh, man, I, I dried it out. I took it to the weld shop. They welded a three inch by four foot long piece of aluminum over the, over the cut. Um, cause what it was, it was a stump with a piece of rebar in it. So it just, oh, the, no. the rebar punched through and it just cut it like a can opener right down the middle of it. And, uh, they welded up. They did an awesome job there. Rel the weld shop was right there, aired everything out. You know, I got back out the next day of practice and, uh, I was shocked. Everything worked the next day, everything worked. And now we're like, you know, three weeks later, <laughs> I'm not leaking. All of all my batteries are working. Everything. Every, I mean, it's incredible. It's like never even happened. Dude. It's amazing that nothing shorted out. Like the oh, fact yeah. that's a miracle from above yeah. that well, nothing so, shorted out. Not saying next week, you know, why we're doing the MPFL <laughs> thing. I'm out there stranded and I'm like, Hey man, none of my batteries work or anything. But I mean, for, for three, you know, three weeks they've been solid. So I'm going to keep running them just There's to see. There's no, uh, there's no Uber at Pickwick either, bud. So <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I think that's a testament. You know me, I'm a, I'm an express guy. I'm an aluminum guy. I think that's a testament though, to why I enjoy, I mean, look, I don't want to knock a hole in one. I have right. hit some things though that I should not have hit. And, right. and the, the, the toughness of that material like it, it, it really like, dude, had you not hit the rebar, you probably wouldn't have poked a hole. No, it would have been fine. It yeah, would have been, been fine. Been, it might have yeah. been it, scratched I mean, it, whatever. But I, thought my, I thought it was fine. Like even when I went back yeah. in the water, I was just going to take off. But something was telling me to take a look at it. Because can you imagine if I would have took off, oh got farther into Spring, Spring Creek, and probably, you know, the boat, all my, I would have lost all my stuff. Everything. Yeah, just, yeah, but, some, and dude, uh, can you imagine if that had been in a glass boat though? Like what a testament. Oh. I mean, cause it would have destroyed it. First of all, like just immediately. Mm -hmm. And there's no, Oh yeah. Well then I practiced again. Then I fished the event. Now I'm three yeah, weeks later it, there's, it there's had in a glass boat. boat. None of yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. It would, it would have totaled out the glass boat. Seminole is, it's an evil fishery. It really is. It is, man. I love it though. I oh, love yeah. it besides that part. Like the fishing, I love the fishing there. I just hate running around there. Sucks, man. It takes me, it takes me like a full day every time I go there to kind of like mentally get into. All right, I'm just gonna hit shit the entire time I'm. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Used to in the glass, and I haven't fished it since I've had my express. But like when I yeah. was with Rangers, it'd just be like, dong, dong, yeah, ah, yeah, all day. Yeah. You're like, oh, like you're good, yeah. and you know, you see, you'll go buy stuff that will have rebar on it. And oh like, yeah. Oh my God, if I hit that, I'm going to poke a hole. Like it's in your mind. And Santee Cooper is a lot like that for me too. Like it's yeah. one of those places. It takes me uh, like a day to go. All right. Kind of yeah. got to get into this. Like it's Thunderdome. Like this is yeah. not a oh, yeah. class fishery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I don't think anywhere has anywhere has more. Uh, Seminole's got more rebar than anywhere I've been. It's weird. I've never. It really. 
Uh, I mean, it's a good idea to mark the stumps and the channel, yeah. you know, the white pole and the re and that's what the rest where the rebar gets. In okay, it. I got you. Uh, but what happens is when someone breaks that white pole off, then the rebar's still in the stump, and then you hit you hit it. You know, that's the that's the problem with it. But I was down there one time fishing a BFL as a co angler. I was like seventeen. I made a regional, and the guy I drew on day two was from Kentucky at zero. The first day he's ready to get out of there. He hated his life. Super nice guy. But he was like, Hey man, if I ain't caught anything by 12, I'm getting the hell out of here. Well, I end up catching a seven pounder. Well, dude, wow. that, one, that one fish, it was like October's miserable. It was like right out. Like oh six yeah. Miles. Oh, it almost made the all American for me at 17. Right. Like I missed it by a pound. I think I might've, did I, I might've fished that one. I don't dude. remember. I, dude. I, I was, like I was I remember. Young. Yeah. But, but I caught I, the fish. And this dude, he goes, well, I guess I got to stay till the end of the day. And he wanted to go home. And, dude, I've never felt so bad. We're we're in Spring Creek, and this dude hits a stump that's got a damn nail nailed in the top of it. And he had a champion, a 210 champion. And you just he's on the trailer, and you just hear, yeah. And I'm like, what is that, man? He gets off of it, and this dude, like, he's his boat was pristine, nothing like mine and yours. Like, he, yeah. you know, dude, and it's just – it's just a gouge. Like you could take your thumb and get in it and just trashes his boat. And he had to stay because of me. Oh God. <laughs> had we not got, had we not had to wait on me to weigh this bass in, uh, he would have, he would have, he would never would have. Oh, and I felt terrible. And he was, he was super nice. He, he told everybody all day. And this may be, if you were in the event, I do think the Gator division was in it. Yeah. I think Bama, Choo Choo. Yeah. No, I, I think, it, I, I think, I think Bama. I was Gator. I don't know. I think I just started driving. Okay. Uh, I was just Steve, going. Steve Kennedy was in it? Yeah. Steve Kennedy was in the tournament. He did good, and yeah. he had a little tunnel hole deal going on. Went yeah. way up the plane or whatever. But uh, I caught one keeper the first day. The guy I was with hit a rock. I caught one little one, and then and I lost a two-pounder. And I think maybe I missed All-American by two pounds, whatever. But yeah. but my, I'd never caught – dude, I'd caught like some five-pounders. Like I don't know that I'd ever caught a six, maybe. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. this fish was really long and skinny. When dude netted her, he's like, that's a 10 pounder. He was from Kentucky. He didn't know. Yeah. Didn't yeah. Know. Well, I was like, damn, dude, I called a 10 pounder. Everybody we saw all day. Yeah. The water. He's like, y'all doing any good? He's like, my co has got a 10 pounder. <laughs> when we, I swear, when we got back to, uh, to Wingates yeah. that afternoon, someone from FLW brought me a damn weigh-in bag they were like get it up here son like dude they were waiting on me like oh yeah and i was like yeah daddy came to play and i think it weighed like 612 <laughs> <laughs> when we got when i got on stage with it i forget who the, i forget who the tournament director was but he was like all right Luke, man, that's, a, that's a big one what do you think and i'm like ah oh, you know i'm gonna say like eight one and i was being conservative because i was like 10 pounder yeah yeah <laughs> six pounder he goes he goes you big eyed that one didn't you <laughs> <laughs> yeah man and and then the craziest part of this is if you go back and look at the record i did not officially win big bass in the tournament so they had a side pot for the right. money that i did not pay at the meeting because i missed it i ended up getting the they gave me the plaque for big bass which i have in my shop from that yeah. tournament from 2000 whatever 2000 maybe 2000 Four. oh yeah that no, was 2000 Four. i think it was 2000 oh. Yeah, right. Yeah, 2000, 2001. Anyways, I have the plaque and did not win a penny for it. They oh. gave the other dude the money that called a smaller bass. Oh. I didn't put my 10 bucks in the side pot and they weren't officially paying money for big bass. It was a side. Oh. Pot. It was, that was the Operation Bass days, actually. It wasn't after the living. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> so so I've had a lot of memories of Seminole. A lot yeah. Of a lot of them. Uh, almost died in a tornado when we were there for the FLW tour in a house trailer. <laughs> oh, God. Jesse, dude, yeah, like me and Sam George and then I had my camera guy. Well, yes, dude, the video from that's hilarious. Like we had tornado warnings, dude. It got it got sideways where we were staying, man. Oh, my gosh. Holes in the roof of the place from where that hurricane came through. Dude, it was flooding in the house. Oh. Craziest damn week of our life. Oh, like that, we yeah, went right after that. Right hurricane. after. It looked like, it looked like, right. uh, okay. To quote uh, Russell Russell Cecil, my buddy Russell from Texas, Russell said, yeah, it looks like Beirut. <laughs> it looked like something overseas. Dude, it was just – everything was just leveled. It looked like a yeah. bomb from Hurricane Michael. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Got right on. after it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, me, man. That, like, uh, that's all I can think about every time I watch Seminole, though. And then when you're talking about stumps, I'm like, yeah. 
Yeah, I've yeah. I've been there, done that many times, buddy. Many times. Yeah. Well, dude, I I always appreciate you coming on. I reached out to you not long ago. I was like, dude, we got to talk about this MPFL thing. So I'm glad we could do it the week of, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, we'll get to talk to you on camera because you said, dude, we're gonna have fun if if you get if I'm commentating and you're on live, yeah. it's gonna be oh, a good. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I can't wait, man. I'm I'm excited, and uh, anytime, man. I I enjoy coming on here, talking to you, and catching up. It's always good, buddy. And uh, uh, you know, I wish I could say, come up to the house and hang out while you're at Pickwick, but I'm going to be in Wisconsin. Yeah. Oh, in yeah. studio for a tournament that's 35 minutes from my house. Oh man. Oh, you guys should have set up there uh, on the water there. Yeah. Well, we did that year one, and then yeah. the production value. It's just, it's. I don't want to say easier. It's just everything runs smoother when we're in studio. Yeah. It's just yeah. Signal wise and everything. Yeah, dude. that's There's true. a reason Bass does it that way. There's a reason yeah. MLF does it that way. Yeah. We tried it. It was cool. I miss dearly being at the events and seeing everybody right. at the way in and high five because it's that's part of it for me. And it's a right. little different being 12 hours from it. But uh yeah, man, we have fun anyways. Me, I got fat cat to hang out with. And right, right. right. The only bad part about him is he gives awkward hugs constantly. He's <laughs> <laughs> John Cox, you're the man. I appreciate you, buddy. Oh, thanks, Luke. Thanks. John Cox, everybody. One of the John Coxes. <laughs> well, all right. That's all she wrote with John Boy, John Cox. Like I said, one of my favorite folks. Always a great freaking time with him. And uh, just, you can't make his life up in the insanity. He takes it on, but he is a tournament fisherman period that's all he wants to do and he's obviously very damn good at it got a lot of events coming up this year and uh, i can't wait as you guys are listening to this and and pickwick's fixing to get rolling there for the mpfl i can't wait to see how he does with us this year i'm sure it'll be more of the same that it's been everywhere he's been in his career especially in recent years but i thank john for coming on. I thank the folks from the W Sauce for bringing you the sauce right there with old John Boy. Don't forget, you can tune in and watch us, MPFL Live. Go to the MPFL uh, website there. You're going to get to see it on Fix TV. The Fix TV app is where you can find Weighing In with Luke and Fat Cat. It's, it's going to be a large time. Go check that out as well. And then the Bassmaster Classic. Don't forget, don't forget, 1 p.m. in the Express Boats booth. And then that night, the Throwdown parking lot party tailgate for all the low lifers at the hill bar and grill there in downtown knoxville it's gonna be fun man the next few weeks are gonna be wild lots of goings on lots of traveling but uh it's the traveling circus baby so it's, it's all we ever do thank y'all each and every one of y'all for tuning in each and every week i appreciate you with all i got it's awesome getting to do this getting to interact with y'all at events coming up like the classic it's just it means more than you realize and uh we're gonna always do it as long as we got a breath in us and as long as y'all keep showing up all right you bunch of low lifers so go take you out with some biloxi blues and i'll see y'all next time could make it last spanish moss a civil war ghost Sweet. well i'm gonna leave them in the past any direction, Lord, I'll be fine. It don't matter, east or west. North, south, wherever the wind blows, I'm leaving those burdens at rest. This highway, it does not know my name, and I don't care, no, I don't care. Heading my way for another place. And I got three good tires and a spare Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi With just enough gas to get there